Tonight, we're hosting the second of three voter education segments designed to learn more on the issues that are important to older voters in Arizona. The focus tonight is on the economy, and our panel includes two registered Arizona voters, Mark Giles and Jim Ryan. Mark and Jim, good to have you both here. Thank you so much for joining us. Mark, we'll start with you. Uh, the economy, how big of an issue is this to your vote? I think it's table stakes in making sure that the economy is working well and that what we see will happen in the future will keep it going well. So, Biggie? Very much so. And if, if the economy were going bad, we would be all over making a change. If we see that the future is not going well, then I think we need to definitely make a change. What do you think? Economy for you, how big an issue? It's big. I think it needs to be sort of elevated so that it's an economy for the middle class and lower class and more of what it's turned into an upper class and a, um, you know, an institutional economy. Yeah, and Jim, we'll stick with you. Cost of living within that economy, how big an issue for you? Lately, enormous. Yeah. If, if, an, if a candidate says, I've got a way to fix the cost of living or to keep it from exploding or to lower it and it makes sense to you, that's a big deal? Definitely. Yeah. What do you think? I agree. I think there are lots of people out there that have been struggling and they need help and support and the cost of living needs to be fixed. We've seen inflation go through the roof and now we need to see that it's under control or if it's not under control, then what are we going to do to fix that? So for me, that's a big issue. Uh are you worried about your own financial situation? Me personally, I'm probably in a situation where I'm more caring about the investments. Uh, at the moment, we've seen the markets ride really well. And if that were to keep on going, then I'd have enough money to live through the rest of my lifetime in retirement. So balance that out, though, with concerns of cost of living and inflation. It's huge. If, if we see our money being spent today much more than we thought, then perhaps we have to go out and work again. Perhaps we have to think about other ways of actually making money. Yeah. And, and Jim, again, the market's doing very well, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, the cost and the inflation is actually easing. Let's, let's be honest here. It has, it's not what it once was. Uh, cost of living, go to the grocery store, you still know what's going on there. Is this the kind, are, are you a single issue voter when it comes to this kind of stuff? Um, no, I look at multiple issues. Okay. I mean, the economy is one thing. It's like we ask what flavor of economy. You know, you can talk about the local, the state, the federal, the NAFTAs, yes. and then you go to this whole digital domain economy that's like invisible in the Wild West. So, I mean, to me, it's like, I don't know sometimes when they're talking about you know, what economy is, is specifically they're going to address because they're also interwoven nowadays. I don't know how you know where the head is and the tail is. Let's, let's talk about two things that affect the economy, Social Security and Medicare. Mm -hmm. How concerned, Jim, are you for those programs? Um, I use them both. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, Social Security, <clears throat> I think that will take care of itself if people try tampering with it. And as for Medicare and that, I think it, that definitely needs to be expanded. Okay. When you say tampering, raising the age of Social Security a no-go for you? No, I think, well, sort of. I think it should be based more on a, an equity position. You know, people that make more money should basically give less and contribute to the greater good, as opposed to, you know, those that are in poverty should get a little bit more. You know, I've got friends that are well off and they're still getting Social Security and they don't need it. So it's sort of like maybe they should, you know, share to the people that do need it. Mark, if I were a candidate and I'd say it's time to change the funding formula for Social Security, it's time to change the funding formula for Medicare, you would say, do I have, do I have your vote if I say that? No. And uh, I think we've made a contract already with people and citizens in the past, and we have told them exactly what they're going to get in their Medicare and their Social Security. And if we make changes, it has to be in the future in some way. We should protect yeah. what's already committed and make sure all those people that have put away enough savings in order to live their retirement life and depend on what they're going to get from Social Security, if they can't rely on that, that's a deal breaker for me. If I say that we should raise the payrolls taxes to support Medicare, you would say? If necessary. We perhaps should. What do you think? Would you? Would, would something like that be, be turn off to you? It, it's a, it's an avenue. You know, raising okay. tax is always an avenue, but it's like we also got to figure a way to get some more revenue. Yes. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like you know, it's always easy to take that funny money out of the tax system. Prescription drug costs. How big a concern to you? <laughs> um, definitely. I don't know how some people can get by. I mean, it's a, definitely. I mean, it's like a commodities market. Does it make sense to you, one party or another, one candidate or another, if they come around and they have a good idea regarding prescription drug, is that going to turn your head? Oh, if they have a good plan, yes. you're for it. Yes, you're for it, but does a candidate turn your head? 
I'll, I'll pay more attention. Okay, what about you, Mark? Me too. I'm actually in the gap between um, paying for private insurance now before I can qualify for Medicare mm -hmm. and look at the huge costs that we're presently paying. So if there's a way of controlling that and making it easier for us to actually ensure exactly what we're getting is uh, value for us, then I would look at that. But, you know, to your other point, if it's not out of the way, uh, this is still one of those table staker items, but I don't see it broken at the moment. I see it good enough. If, it, if we've, got, we've talked about inflation easing, but that means less in the way of cost of living increases for Social Security. Mm -hmm. uh, where do you work on that balance? And again, in politics and again in terms of candidates who talk about this kind of stuff. Yep. If, if we see one moving up and the other moving in parallel, then I guess it's sort of neutral. If it's moving in inflation up, but not all of our um, entitlements and uh, income, then I think that's a problem. Yeah, Jim, you know how people are. They see Social Security not increasing the way they thought it should, and it, it did during those inflation years. Mm -hmm. They're going to say, hmm. Are you going to say, hmm? Yeah, I mean, you know, the whole idea that with this impact of inflation, there's like the music and the words don't match. Yes. I mean, it's like I hear that this rate's at 5%, 4%, and then I look at, you know, milk went from 97 cents to 250 for a half a gallon of milk. Right. I'm like going, that's way more than 6%. <laughs> you know yes. what I'm saying? So I, I find the whole argument of an, uh, inflation sort of intimidating and sort of a, doesn't sort of make a lot of sense to me. It's not really something I've seen people coherently dealing with. So with that in mind, again, I'm a candidate and I'm really pushing inflation. I'm pushing the economy. I'm pushing cost of living. So, so I'm doing this is this is my can. This is this is what I stand on. Are you someone who would follow me? If you have a good plan and you've, it's actionable. Yes. And that would maybe change your vote. Yes. What do you think? I think with the situation I'm seeing ahead of me at the moment, it's huge and hugely important that economy is sorted out but I don't see enough difference in any of the candidates to actually say this would be the decision maker for me to go one way or the other. Um, if either candidates or if any of the local candidates were to have a different plan that would scare me, I would go away from them. <laughs> but if we continue with the plans we have ahead of us, I don't think this would be the number one issue for me to decide to vote. And real quick, are the people that you hang out with, friends, family, they feel the same way? Um, the, the, the folks that are older, a little older. Yeah, kind of mi mixed bag. Mixed bag. Uh, because mm -hmm. I, I think uh, we're in the same situation that Jim said, where lots of people are finding it hard to live inside their budget and make sure they can actually make their money work. What, last word on this, Jim. Are you hearing the same thing? Oh, definitely. I mean, it's all basically where you are within the the hierarchy of the economy and it's like people in the middle down are squeezed those up it's no big deal yeah it's interesting when people talk about the economy as you mentioned there are lots of different micro economies mm -hmm. out there and everyone's paying attention and it affects everyone's vote hey good conversation guys good to have you both here thanks Thank for joining us thanks